Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first conditions briefing of 2023. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Tony Bergantino, I'm director of the Wyoming State Climate Office and the Water Resources Data System. Uh, the webinar uh, this month is being presented by my office, U.S. Geological Survey, uh, National Weather Service, and the USDA Northern Plains Climate Hub and University of Wyoming Extension. And today we'll be looking at current drought and climate conditions, uh, surface water conditions, uh, look forward with weather forecasts and outlooks, and afterwards I'll be detailing where to find various snowpack data. So let's start out on the, the current conditions portion of it and jump into the drought monitor map. Uh, this came out this morning, and this is where we are as of Tuesday of this week. We've had some good snows building up since our last webinar, and some of the precipitation is reflected in the improvements that you can see throughout the map here. Uh, it was nice to see all the changes in green this month, although we did have a little bit of degradation up here in the north, uh, resulting from uh, some continued deterioration of soil moisture, lack of precipitation in the, in the Bighorn Basin. Uh, some may be wondering why there hasn't been more improvements given the snows we've had. And some of that is attributed to areas that have been uh, in long-term drought where it'll take a bit of, of moisture to pull us out of it. And another reason is that snowpack can often be thought of as money in the bank or your retirement plan. So until you start to withdraw it, you aren't certain how much exactly you're gonna have. And last year, even though we were building fairly well, snows did shut off around early January and uh, none of the basins really reached median. Uh, the snowpack continued pretty much barely going up from uh, about the first part of January into, into March, uh, very, very slow uh, slope of, of increase. And also with the ground still very frozen in many areas, there hasn't been as much uh, soil moisture improvement as there would be if, you know, if the ground was uh, thawed and more receptive to infiltration. So look at the timelines here of a drought, this continuing uh, updated timeline of the, the status of drought in the state. Um, we have the percentage of Wyoming in each drought category from 2000 up to this week. Um, 2000 is when the drought monitor started. So we've got about 23, a little over 23 years of data now to, to show on the chart. And as you can see, some part of Wyoming has been in D3 now for, or extreme drought for the last 130 weeks. Um, at uh, 47.63%, the area of the state in uh, the D1 to D4 category did go down by about 9%, a little over 9% uh, since the last webinar, which was in November. And while this shows the whole state as a whole, uh, the state as a whole, you can uh, check out similar graphs uh, for your county to get an idea how things are closer to home. And those charts are available down here at the URL on the, the lower left part of the slide. And we'll zoom in a little bit on since a little bit before this current drought started. Uh, so this shows from the start of 2020 on up to present. And so that it covers you know, the, the whole period of this uh, recent drought. Uh, Almost six and a quarter percent of the state is in extreme drought now, and which is a little bit of about quarter percent decrease from our last webinar. It's gone down a little bit, but uh, that uh, D3 over in the eastern part of the state has been, been holding on pretty strong. Uh, at least it is a decrease. Uh, the amount of the state with no D category whatsoever, that shows up as the gray on the map with none of the, the yellow reds colors, is almost 27% now, which is the largest percentage since the 7th of July in 2020 as we were moving into this drought. So here is the 14 day precipitation. This is the accumulated precipitation over the last two weeks being shown as percentile. And you can see a lot of purple there, which means we're up in the 98th, 100th percentile uh, in, the, in the, basically the Southern half of the state, a little bit of the Northern part of the winds is, is uh, a little on the dry side. Uh, areas of concern, especially in the Bighorn Basin, and that's where we uh, had some of the D0 or uh, abnormally dry introduced during this, this last week on the drought monitor. Uh, but even the, the north uh, east corner here is, is showing some nice blues, but the, the Bighorns, Bighorn Basin, and then the northwest quarter of the state uh, is, could use a little bit more precip, and, at least in the last two weeks. Uh, looking at the same map uh, over the 90 days, uh, a little bit better, but our uh, our uh, area of concern has moved over here, uh, and this is at a longer term. This is this is three months, so the far northeast, or not quite the northeast, but uh, 
you know, Weston County, Niobrara County are showing these uh, very low percentiles. And then to a lesser extent, we're seeing uh, uh, the northern part of the Bighorn Basin and, and parts of the, the west over here where we're you know, not quite up at the, uh, the medium part of, of precipitation yet, at least over the last three weeks. Uh, this is the standardized precipitation index or the SPI, which is a, a different way of looking at precipitation rather than just looking at uh, the total amount that's fallen. Uh, it allows you to compare conditions across regions that have different precipitation amounts because it's more of a statistic. So by calculating what the current precipitation amount is, whether it's for a month, year, two years, uh, and then determining the number of standard deviations that is away from a normal, uh, an index value is created. And that value, uh, not a precipitation amount, is what's being shown on these maps. And these values generally go uh, from around a negative two on the dry side up to a positive two on the wet side. And these two maps, or the three maps, two maps on the, the upper part here are showing 30 and 60 day. And then on the bottom right, we have one year. A lot of blue or wet showing up on the 30 and 60 day maps, though you can still see some yellows and uh, even in some of the red colors showing up, uh, even at the, the shorter time frames uh, in the Northwest and some of the North Central parts. At one year, you can see a lot more of the deeper oranges and significantly less uh, blue, indicating that the longer term droughts in the West and, and the East and Southeast areas, and you see that reflected on the, the drought map that we just saw. Switching over a bit to temperature, these are the minimum temperatures for the last uh, two weeks, 14 days. Uh, up here on the upper right, we have the absolute temperature. Uh, so you have degrees over here uh, as in uh, what you'd see on the thermometer. And you can see that uh, Fremont County, the upper green, the winds have been, been fairly cool with temperatures down five degrees or less over the last uh, two weeks. Uh, warming out up under the under the plains. Uh, but looking at this as a departure from the normal, you can kind of see the same that the uh, uh, Fremont County, the Southwest about uh, plus or minus three degrees of average while West as a whole, eh, three up to nine degrees above average in a few pockets up here in the Yellowstone area. Uh, the Eastern portion, a bit warmer compared to average, uh, especially down here in Platt, Splint into Goshen County where we're uh, up into the uh, 12 to 15 degrees above, above average for the last uh, two weeks. But quite a bit of red in this nine to 12 degrees above average uh, range. And the same thing, but looking at maximum temperatures, uh, again, we see Fremont County, Upper Green, uh, really standing out as cold on the, the maximum temperatures as well. Uh, and again, the east a little bit cooler than uh, the Western Plains. Western Plains getting up into the 40s in some places, mid 40s almost. Uh, looking at it as a departure from normal again. Uh, Fremont County, the southeast or southwest, uh, kind of a same old story, uh, three to nine degrees below average. Uh, the northern regions about three to six above, except for Crook, Weston County, which is uh, six to nine degrees above average. And then the rest of the state within you know, these lighter greens and yellows indicating plus or minus three degrees of average over the last two weeks. Uh, looking at soil moisture, this is uh, showing the last two weeks. Uh, you can see some improvement in the central part where we're getting uh, even, even wetter up into the 80th to 90th percentile, but we are losing ground uh, in the, the Northwest and holding the same over here in the, the East, but we're also losing some up here in the North where we did see that uh, degradation in the last drought monitor. So sort of a mixture uh, improvement and uh, going downhill in other places. A look at frost depths. These are collected from state engineer's office stations, the upper Missouri stations and a, and a host of a few others. You can see Sheridan about the lone holdout here where we're, we're frost free at our station there, but and uh, the eastern part of the state uh, depths down about half a foot or, or less down here in the, in the southeast. But you look in uh, Fremont County, Bighorn Basin, you get uh, frost down to uh, our station, the Boyson Reservoir down over three feet, uh, a little bit less up here in the, the Bighorn Basin, but still foot to, to two feet range for, for your frost depth. 
And just popping up one of the photos from our station. This is that Boyson station that I showed you, showing the, the snow stake uh, here. This is in the, obviously in the central part of the state. And then showing the snowpack decline, not much of a decline, inch and a half or so, a loss of uh, snow depth here over the last seven days. Looking at the state as a whole, this is the, the modeled snow water equivalent over the entire state. Uh, some pretty good uh, mounts on the ground here in the central part, western areas. Uh, the northern areas last week or two weeks ago and this week are uh, you know, pretty much bare in places. And we did lose ground in the eastern part of the state where you can see here two weeks ago that we were right about uh, the median and uh, above in, in several areas, whereas now we're, we're melted out in this area here. We did uh, pick up a little bit down in, in the uh, Laramie County in the last few days though. And here we're showing the, uh, the basin. This is just a number per basin. Uh, it's the water equivalent percent of median. Uh, and I should say here with median that this, these are in terms of median, which is not the same as an average, which although uh, they can be, the average is where you take up all the values and then divide by however many you have. Whereas the media, median is you take a, all the values that you have, sort them in order, and then your middle value or the average of the two middle values, if you have an even number, that is your median value. So that is the middle value of your of your uh, of your data set rather than the the average of it. That's uh, and that's often used when you're looking at um, data sets such as snowpack that might have a, a lot of skewing of data to one side or the other. Uh, and it gives a, a little bit better uh, representation of where you're at when you look at it in terms of a median versus an average. But this is where we're looking for uh, percent of median. Uh, parts of the, the northern regions of the state are running right around that median or maybe a few points above or below, uh, while the rest of the state is well above except for the South Platte and Wyoming, which although it has improved uh, lately is still quite a bit under, under the median uh, value. Uh, the snow tells in the uh, South Platte jumped by about one and three quarter inches of SWE in the last two days, that's uh, snow water equivalent. And the Cocoa Ross stations over in Laramie County picked up about four to nine inches of snow, which ranged in uh, uh, ranged in values from about 0.3 inches to 0.8 inch of, of snow water equivalent from that snow. So we we definitely had a little bit of a pickup here in, in, the, in the South Platte in the last few days, and, and hopefully that'll continue and we can move that out of that, that awful orange color that we're seeing there, and it can, can join the rest of the basins that we have in the state in terms of being, being much closer to that median. This is showing the buildup of the snowpack uh, in this particular basin is the Wind River Basin. Uh, and this year we have uh, in the dark line here, we're coming down a little bit, but we're still above the median, although we are uh, under where we were last year. And this is that very shallow slope buildup of snowpack that I mentioned earlier from the first week of January uh, into March, where we did not see much of a buildup. Uh, the blue line is the, the maximum amount for any given day. Uh, the red is the uh, the minimum value for any day. And then, as I mentioned, that green is the is the median. Uh, let's see. And then we'll look at uh, the volume of the water in the snowpack. Uh, this is showing the Snake River Basin. This is all, all elevations. Uh, the dark line circled is this year's trace again, while the blue is at maximum, the red the minimum that I mentioned before, uh, bright green in the median. And then that sort of light dashed green is the average. And, and like uh, the previous charts, these are updated daily, and they can be found down here in the link in the bottom part of the part of the slide. So with that, we'll we'll pause a little bit on on the on the snow, and I'll turn it over to Aaron Fiaschetti with the USGS, who will talk about uh, surface water conditions. Aaron, oh wait a minute, oh. one more slide here. <laughs> Let's. Uh, Let's go over this one a bit. This is just a little example of where all the basins are in 2023 versus where they were in 2022 and compared to the median. And that's as of uh, yesterday. And as you can see, we're, we're above in almost all of them. Uh, a few of them were a little bit below last year, uh, these three, and then compared to the median, these five, uh, big orange is shown 
uh, South Platte, Tongue, and Yellowstone are below the median. One of them, the Cheyenne, is right at the median. Uh, and, and with that, I'll turn it over to Aaron. Thank you, Tony. Um, so this will be a, a brief update from us since uh, being that we're in the, the depths of winter, most of our stations are um, ice affected. So when you get ice on a stream or a river, it throws off the stage discharge relationship and it's a, extremely difficult to put out accurate real-time data um, in it. So most of the stations here, this is a screenshot from the National Water Information Dashboard that shows uh, each station in Wyoming as the circle. And then uh, everything in gray means that it's in ice. Um, so we're unable to put out real-time discharge, but those stations will be updated by hydrographers periodically where they'll go in and uh, estimate winter record and put that out as a daily value. Um, and then there's stations showing uh, discharge. These are generally stations that are higher up, closer to the mountains, a little steeper gradient, enough gradient to kind of keep the ice off the control and keep the relationship valid. So we're able to put out data or it's below a reservoir where the stream conditions are open. So green here is uh, 25th, 75th percentile. That's a, a, a normal condition. So it's normal to be low, it's normal to be high. Um, but so that's, uh, that's that range. The blues are above normal, that above the 75th percentile, the dark blues above the 90th percentile. So showing some pretty high flows uh, coming out of the bighorns. With, with that being said, high flows were, Everything should be frozen right now. All the precipitation coming down should be frozen. So the range of winter flows is not that high. We should be kind of at the bottom of, uh, of the hydrograph for base flows. So there, when it, it shows a high flow right now, it, it's not really meaningful in terms of large volumes of water. There are a couple stations up in the park. The fire hole, and I believe that's a given that are showing an all-time low for the day. Um, these stations have relatively short period of record, but with the, the same caveat that um, when your winter flows are really low to begin with, uh, uh, a record low isn't, it's, isn't extremely low. So, but in general, the stations that are showing, uh, showing uh, hydrologic conditions right now, that most things look good ex with the exception of that corner of the park. Uh, so moving on, please. So we'll just bounce around to a, a couple stations that we had uh, data from. Here's the Wind River above Red Creek. And you can see the this is uh, this hydrograph here is very similar to uh, the percentiles that I described before, where the green is that normal, the 25th to 75th. And we're focused on the, the 2022, 2023, the current stream flow is that black line. Um, so you can see in January, the hydrograph should be um, pretty pretty low, the low point for the year, because everything's locked up in snow and ice and most streams are just fed by groundwater inflows. But uh, here in the Bighorns, it looks around this, uh, in the Wind River um, near Du Bois, uh, flows are a little bit up right now. Um, but they're not significantly up. But in general, things look pretty reasonable there in that location and, and all around the wind rivers there on the north and south sides. And then moving on here to the Bear River, this um, southwest corner of the state has had really low stream flow conditions for most of last year. Um, and this one here showing Bear River below the reservoir um, still, it's below the median for sure, but uh, things look like they're kind of chugging along all right there um, in that location. Uh, some of these Bear River locations throughout the year were showing some really low flows. So this looks a little more promising than what we've seen over the summer months. And then just kind of bumping over here to the uh, east side of the state, North Platte River at the state line. Uh, things uh, continue to be pretty low there. 
hanging around that uh, below normal, that 10th to the 25th percentile. And it looks like right now we're hanging uh, closer to that 10th percentile than the 25th. So things are pretty low over there um, on the Platte River at the, the state line, but not, not a lot of water moving around the state um, in general and most of our stations that are reporting. Moving on to uh, reservoirs here. Um, so in general, the, most of the smaller reservoirs, there was only minor changes in storage, and that's due to just not a lot of water coming down the rivers and able to be stored. There was some larger changes in some of the bigger reservoirs like Flaming Gorge and Bighorn, where some water was moved out of storage for whatever purpose or management purpose that might be. And then uh, Palisades Reservoir, Jackson Reservoir on the west side had been pretty low for most of the year. Uh, Palisades did have some reasonable gains in storage, about 14% increase in storage over there. So some water was able to be stored there, but uh, the general synopsis is not a lot of water moving around, not a lot of water to be stored unless there's some sort of a management need on the bigger reservoirs to move water downstream uh, and for so that that's all I have there's yeah it's kind of a tough time of year to present stream flow with uh, all the ice that's present so thank you thanks Aaron and now we'll go to Lance Vandenberger with the National Weather Service in Riverton to talk about weather forecasts and outlooks go ahead Lance all right thank you Tony um, jumping in here to the seven day total precipitation forecast, you can see that there's not a lot of uh, snow predicted across Wyoming over the next week. Um, the places that are likely to see the most are going to be kind of the northeastern quadrant of the state where we will have um, a cold front move through a little bit of northwest flow. Um, there could be some light mountain snow, or primarily mountain snow tonight into Friday. But then most of that is going to fall with that cold front that comes in Sunday into Monday. And then uh, periods of light snow could continue for much of the next week as well, but they're not going to be, there's no large weather systems that are uh, going to add the most. Most of it will fall with that Sunday into Monday system. So we can step forward from there. Looking at the six to 10 day outlook, you can see on the left there, um, the pretty confident signal for below average temperatures for much of Wyoming, uh, a little bit stronger signal even in the south there, given we're going to have a large trough over us with cold air uh, coming down from Canada and uh, digging that trough well to the south even of Wyoming. And then on the right there, you can see that there's uh, not quite as strong a signal, but a slight lean towards above normal precipitation for uh, especially northeast Wyoming. And again, that has to do with that northwest flow and the, the system that's coming out of uh, kind of the Canadian Canadian Plains, Canadian Rockies. All right, looking ahead now to the 8 to 14 days. So this covers uh, January 26th through February 1st. You can see that the signal remains for uh, fairly confident, uh, you know, likely above or above normal chances of below normal temperatures. And uh, that with those blue colors, especially in the southwestern half of the state. As far as uh, precipitation goes, once we get, uh, you know, the week past Next, uh, the signal goes to near normal for most of the state. Even the above in the northeast quadrant there is, uh, or northeast tier, it, it's it's not a very strong signal. Um, you know, near normal might be the, the best summary for the state of Wyoming. All right, um, as far as uh, long range hazard outlook, you know, we do include this at times. Uh, this relates to that cold air. It will be notably colder uh, I looked at wind chills over the next, uh, you know, kind of in that eight to 10 day time frame at least. Uh, nothing too unusual there, negative teens, negative 20s, no nothing out of the ordinary for uh, the middle of winter in Wyoming. But just be aware that there will be some, some chance for well below normal temperatures across, uh, especially the southeastern half of the state. All right, so uh, this is a slide that we don't normally go through, but before going to seasonal outlooks, which are you know kind of longer term forecasts past what uh, weather models are, are, are detailed weather models show, wanted to jump into just uh, an explanation on what we're talking about here. So 
Uh, I, the subtitle there is understanding above normal chances for below normal temps. Sometimes that can be kind of confusing. So one way to think about these long range outlooks is as a weighted coin flip. Um, a regular coin flip, you know that there's a 50% chance of heads and 50% chance of tails. So we might call that equal chances of an outcome. Uh, if you know that the coin is weighted towards tails, maybe you have a slightly better chance of getting tails, but you could also get heads. It just, it, it will depend. But if you're, you know, if you're going to Vegas and doing, uh, you know, a thousand iterations of this, you're better off saying tails if you know that the coin is weighted towards tails. The same is kind of true when we talk about a long-term weather outlook. So although um, we have multiple categories, or we have three categories instead of two, um, the way that the Climate Prediction Center, which is a branch of the Weather Service does it, is they kind of do it into uh, thirds, you know, third of the time you're going to be above normal, a third you're going to be near normal, a third you're going to be below normal. Um, so that set up, if we didn't have any additional information, we might call that equal chances. We can't really, for the, you know, for the upcoming spring, let's say, uh, equal chances would mean uh, climatology is your best forecast. Looking at, you know, long-term averages over the last 30 years, that's going to be your best forecast for what's going to happen this year. Now, if we know something about the global uh, global circulation, the global climate system. Let's uh, making up here. We won't get into the details of what La Nina exactly is, but think of it as like temperatures in the Pacific Ocean are showing a certain signal. Well, that some that sometimes relates to where the jet stream is going to be, and maybe there's a better chance of being below normal. So in that case, you're going to end up with those blue colors on the seasonal outlook that say, uh, you know, in this in this example here, I say 45% chance of below normal. So you can see that there's a one in a one in four chance of still having a warmer than normal uh, period, whatever that may be, you know, February, March, April, or something like that. But there's better chances than not that it will be below normal because of these larger scale climate system uh, trends that we're seeing. So with all that background, and hopefully that that adds a little bit of uh, context for the next slide, we'll go ahead and go on to the three month temp and precip outlook. You can see here that much of the state is in that equal chances. So given the state of the global climate system and the uh, equatorial Pacific Ocean, there's not a lot of signal to be had. However, for the northern tier there on the left graphic, you can see maybe a slight lean towards below normal temperatures. Um, you know, I wouldn't be betting my life savings on that, given that it's a three month outlook, but uh, it, it does show some slight signal there based on the global climate system. And um, if you look on the right there, the seasonal precipitation outlook, the Northwest quadrant may be a slightly stronger signal for uh, above average precip there. Um, and yeah, but for the rest of the state, uh, climatology is gonna be the best forecast for that February, March, April timeframe, because there's just not, not a lot of information provided by the current state of the global uh, you know, forecast, or well, not global forecast system, but the, the global atmosphere ocean system. All right, I think that is my last slide. And it is. All right, awesome. Thanks, Thanks Lance. Lance. All right, now I wanna go into showing a little bit more of some of the snow products that are out there. Uh, some of them were in the webinar, some of them were not. Um, so about 30 years ago, we started hosting snow products and through the years have uh, developed a number of derivative products from them, as well as uh, different methods of display. A lot of this based upon feedback from uh, uh, various entities, agencies, the public about what they would like to see. So I guess just to get started, um, first to navigate to our homepage, uh, the www.wordsuio.edu that you see there, and you'll see a screen that looks much like this, or hopefully it looks identical to this. And you would wanna select the products and data at the top of the page to access a list of the various uh, parameters that we go into with uh, snow being the one that we're gonna look at today. So you'd look at the uh, squirrel buried in the snow, I guess. Which brings you to an inventory of the snow products we serve. Um, the first one I'll go into is the, uh, the Monday morning snow report here, which looks like this. Um, so going over some of these snow products is really like a, a history of my office and its relationship with the SCS, or yeah, I'm dating myself here, uh, the SCS or the NRCS, which it became in 1994. Uh, the Monday morning snow report 
uh, used to reside on the SCS computer called CFS or Centralized Forecasting System. Uh, we had a, a username and password and would, would literally have to dial into the system via modem and capture that file each Monday. And then we mailed, notice I didn't say emailed, but we mailed it to certain people who had a standing request for that information each week. And after I built the first web server back, back when there was about 2,500 sites in the entire world, uh, I thought maybe if we put this online, we could cut down on sending some of these out and make it available to more people. So after some conversations with Dave Taylor, who was the water supply specialist with the NRCS at the time, we began hosting a report on our server. And that report has changed in form over the decades. Uh, but it shows each basin and its snow water equivalent as a percentage of average. And now they're doing it as a percentage of median. And over time, this has become a bit more fancy with the color coding that you see here for uh, above, uh, you know, having increased in the last week or declined or stayed the same in the last week. But by and large, it's uh, showed the same information as it did when we first started posting it. And this was a really, th this was kind of the go to that people, we're looking for for you know what snowpack was doing in the state but putting it out online opened up the proverbial floodgates and since it didn't get tremendous response uh, positive response uh, it made people want more um, they wanted the information daily uh, they wanted to see individual sites well the monday morning snow report obviously comes out on uh, monday mornings but there was another product that we could use instead and this was uh, a bit more detailed and contain not only the basin numbers that you see here, this basin index value, but it also contained uh, values for individual sites. Uh, so it shows for each basin and snow tell the current and median snow water equivalent and percentage, and uh, it gives you the water year to date precipitation, the median amount, and uh, the percent that this year is of the, the median. So now we ended up uh, retrieving this daily and posting it, and that can be found on the link uh, down here at the bottom of this page, or it's also linked on that uh, snow page that I first showed. I'm, I'm not going to keep going back to that to, to show where on there for each of these products, but uh, rest assured you can link to it from that site. And then we heard that uh, for the governor's briefings, someone uh, who shall remain nameless was taking the Monday morning snow report from our page. Uh, they also had a blank uh, eight and a half by 11 copy of the state of Wyoming with some basins drawn on it. And you guessed it uh, by tapping back and forth and turning the spindle, he was able to type each basin percentage in its uh, proper place on the map. And, in essence, started his own GIS for uh, visual display of snowpack information. Uh, needless to say, that wasn't the most efficient way of doing things, but really it was all they had at the time. And it was a bit more uh, advanced than just the table of numbers because it gave a sort of a, a geographic context to where that was. But when I found out about this, I offered to automate that process and create the map. Uh, originally, uh, it was each morning when the Monday morning snow report came out. Uh, I would create the map, but then we later went and took the, the basin values from that uh, snow precipitation update that uh, the last product I showed, which comes out daily. So we could produce this map daily. And it looks something like this. This is not the original uh, since it uses, uh, this one is using the actual delineations of the basins uh, from a shape file, but my original prior to ArcMap servers just had some lines originally drawn on it. And I was basically doing the same thing as a typewriter. I was popping the number on, a, on an image and popping it out there, but it was a lot quicker and it was automated. And through the years, uh, this, okay, this can be found down here at, at this URL and again on the, that other page. But then through the years, we got requests to make this more visual. Uh, so I came up with color coding and we came up with this version here, which actually ran for oh, a couple, probably two decades or so we were using this version. And it was only last year we switched over to this showing uh, some of the topography and making it a little bit easier way of presenting and, and viewing the data. And that uh, eliminates typewriter ribbons. And this map and then links from those again, uh, check out the URLs on the bottom of this page to, to, to find the product. But then as we move forward, uh, I think it was 1990, 
96 or so, 96, I think it was, uh, Dave Taylor asked uh, what it would take to put out the Wyoming Basin and Water Supply Outlook Report online. And so you get me the digital file and I'll put it out there. Uh, and at this time it was actually digital files, plural, as it was a, uh, a word, word file for each section of the report, for, for basically for each basin and then uh, two images for each basin. And so each month he would send that to me, uh, I would doctor it up in HTML and put it out there. And we have this uh, inventory here going back to, uh, looks like the start of 1997 it was in January, we started putting those out. And other than uh, one or two or three missing here, we've got all these reports going back, uh, like I say from 1997 up through the current one. And this, this document contains a wealth of information. If you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to, uh, to, to check it out. It can be uh, found at the link on the bottom of the page, but it, it gives, uh, looks at reservoirs, precipitation, snow, uh, stream flow exceedance uh, as we move through the season, reservoir capacity. I say a, a real, real wealth of information. And, and again, I would encourage you to check that out if you're, if you're interested in a particular basin and getting uh, some additional uh, data from there. And recently, uh, here's another way of uh, looking at the data. It shows all the all the basins in tabular uh, format. I've showed this a few times, but go into a little bit more detail on this. Um, it shows the peak that we have hit so far this year. This is the peak day, uh, peak snow water equivalent date so far. And as you can see, most of these are 18th, 17th, 19th of January. So you can see we're we're continuing to to build on up. And then here in the third column, it gives what that current uh, snow water equivalent peak is. And, and then in a little interesting one that uh, we were asked uh, quite, a, quite often here uh, in the years back was just how, how far off till the peak are we? When do, when do we really peak? And so by taking the, the median peak date throughout the years uh, and taking the peak date that we have from this table here, just sort of a quick calculation to how many days early. If, say, say we peak right now in the Belle Fouche on the 19th of January. Uh, obviously we're not, well, I hope we're not, but we would have been early by 72 days for that peak. And this obviously becomes much more meaningful as we move into, into March and April. And it's sort of on the same line and this column here, this shows the peak snow water equivalent difference uh, in inches. So this peak on the 19th, this value of uh, 3.8 on the, on the 19th is 3.1 inches below the median peak. So we've still got a little ways to go. And as a, as a function of that, then this column here shows what percentage of the median peak we are at right now. And again, this becomes much more meaningful as we get closer into the season. And it's also interesting in retrospect after, after we've hit peak to, to get an idea of, okay, the, the charts and the percentages of median are get really kind of convoluted as you start having the melt off there. And, and when you get a real steep curve and melt off, your difference between median and where you're at right now, even though you might only be two days different, can result in a percentage of, of median that's either uh, say 20% or you could be up at 200%. But the relative value of that is kind of hard to, hard to tell. So when you look at this uh, value here, after the fact, you can see, well, we did get to 87% of the, the peak snowpack in this basin for the year. And it gets, it's, it's a bit more of a meaningful value than, than, than looking at it the other way. Uh, as we move across here, this just gives some uh, station information. Okay, here's the median peak date uh, for uh, each of the basins. Uh, what that peak is in inches. And then here we have the, what the current amount is. And another thing I'm throwing in here is when does that basin typically melt out? Uh, and again, that's the median melt out date. So for the Belle Fouche, typically the basin melts out on the 30th of April, whereas in the Sweetwater melt outs on, uh, typically on the 5th of June when you look at the median values. Uh, so a lot, lot of information in this table and each of these little IMG or image values links to a chart, whereas over here, the, the name itself uh, links to a chart that shows progress through the year. Uh, and then the ones over here show uh, the historical period of record for the station going back to when the station started and shows, uh, for example, if you're looking at the median peak, 
the median is on the second, which is the second of April, which is this line that runs through here. But each year, here are the peak value, uh, dates of the peak value for the years as you go through. And then we throw a 10-year uh, centered moving average on top of that. And similarly, looking at the snow water equivalent in va uh, value in inches, and then similar to the top one, looking at here are the melt out dates throughout the period of record for that station. So a lot of information on that slide, uh, maybe a little bit more than people really need or want, but figure maybe it's available. Let's uh, put it out there for people to look at. Uh, here's the snow water equivalent by volume for each basin. This is looking at uh, you know, taking the basin as a whole and figuring out how much water is locked up in the snow uh, based on modeled uh, remote sense data. And then additionally, this is sliced by elevation. So you can look at how much is in the 7,000 to 8,000 foot range, 8,009, uh, et cetera, going on up to the top of the basin. And you can look at this in terms of each individual elevation slice over here, or you can a little bit further detailed, although still a small image down here, or you can look at the period of record. Each of these are years showing the max, uh, min, and median uh, for each of the years of what the total volume of, of uh, water was, uh, and then a larger value or a larger graph of that up here. But these are all found on the, the page down here. And again, linked from that uh, snow index page. And you saw a similar one to this. This is average versus the percentile, but this is showing the percent of average modeled snow water equivalent over the entire state. Not just looking at a basin value, uh, you know, where you have one value for say the upper green, which would encompass this area here. Uh, you don't have any values here other than, you know, the, the percent range over here but you can get an idea of where you're seeing the, the greater snow water equivalent and where you're, you have some of your shadows where you're missing, or when you're looking at say the tongue and powder and uh, the Northeast here where uh, you're at less than 5% or basically nothing there for the most part. And then this is the one that we saw earlier where this is showing it as a percentile. Very, very similar uh, presentation. The color is a little bit different just because of the scale over here. Uh, a, a few areas you'll see some differences, but with uh, only about uh, 16, 17 years of record, a percentile versus an average, uh, you're getting fa fairly similar, especially when you consider a 10% range uh, for most of these values. But it's just, a, just another way of looking at the snowpack over the entire state versus just looking at one particular basin. And there are uh, several other products on here that, uh, running out of time here that I won't go into them all, but definitely would encourage you to uh, visit the page, look at some of the, uh, the different products on there. The list of them is here. You have some of the uh, historical snow precipitation updates if you wanna look back in time. Uh, we have, do have them for surrounding states if you're interested in uh, some of the values just on the other side of the border. Uh, the basin outlook reports can be found here. Uh, we'll get into doing surface water supply and uh, a few other things as we move into the season. Uh, one I do want to touch on, since the Coco Ross program does collect snow as part of it, uh, part of its uh, uh, mission, you can go to the Coco Ross page and retrieve snowpack information or uh, snow observations from uh, the people who are actually reporting and melting the snow water equivalent uh, from their gauges. And while you're on the site, uh, if you feel like joining that Coco Ross program, please do. Uh, you can contact me either. Uh, uh, offline or get a hold of me through my my contact, which is on the on the next slide. But that's just a little idea of some of the products that we've got uh, for finding snow snowpack information and and resources. And I'd encourage you to look at it. And if you have products or you could use products that you don't see there, you'd like to see something in another presentation or uh, look at data in another way. Uh, please, please get a hold of me, and I'll I'll see what we can come up with to to meet your needs. So, with that, uh, that concludes today's webinar. I'd like to uh, thank my fellow presenters, uh, Aaron Fiaschetti with the USGS and uh, Lance Vandenbogart with the National Weather Service, and of course Wendy Kelly, um, who I will turn it over to now for question and answer. 
Great, thank you, Tony. And I just want to recognize again, all of the presenters and thank everyone who registered and joined us for today's webinar. I also want to note that we have the information on this slide about how to get involved. So Tony mentioned uh, Cocoa Raws and being able to access that information. As always, there's opportunities for you to become a Cocoa Raws volunteer, as well as to submit condition monitoring observer reports. Uh, you can take your smartphone and put it up towards the screen um, and tap using your camera to uh, access that QR code to the website. So here in just a moment, we will uh, transition and start to go through questions that came in through the chat. <clears throat> 